And how's it going guys? Joshua Lefemme here live from LA and we have yet another tutorial with the amazing VFX artist Herman Huang aka Coffee Liquor. You know you've been waiting. We finally got him back for you and he's going to be giving you a banger of a tutorial. It's going to include LED light, glasses and a lot of other crazy stuff in between. He is live from Vancouver, British Columbia up in Canada. Thanks so much guys for coming along. Herman, the floor is yours. Thank you as always for the sick introduction, Josh. How's it going, guys? It's Herman here, and today we are gonna learn how to make any glasses or mask LED animated. Of course, I recommend wearing sunglasses or anything that's dark, whether it's uh, glasses, uh, mask, visor, helmet, you name it. That way, the LED animation will look prominent in contrast to the dark background, making it look cleaner and cooler. Now, I've done this for a music video that I had the pleasure of editing called North Hills. It was directed by the amazing Tyler Casey and starring Soy Generous. They're both dope people, so be sure to check them out after this tutorial. I also use this for the promo of my digital product, which is a motion graphic asset pack. And I mainly want to show you these examples so you can see where the effect can be applied and how you can use it in your next video. So whether it's music videos or commercials or your next sci-fi film, you can implement this technique without physically building a you know, pair of glasses or helmet or mask where there are electronic components, which when you think about it, would probably cost quite a bit of money. So now we can do it and achieve this effect with the magic of VFX which includes time and effort, but I think the results are worth it. So let's get into what you need. Now you will first need to fashion your talent in a sunglasses or mask or helmet of your choice. In this case, we're going to be using these sunglasses, but basically you'll need to add some tracking markers to it. And in this case, I'm using just some pieces of tape. You could just be making some dots and the smaller that they are, the easier it'll be for you to erase and post because that's what you'll need to do. But you'll need to make sure that even though if they're small, you wanna make sure that there are enough like this, where it will give After Effects more data to analyze and track later. So if there's too few, then it might have a hard time. If they're too big, then it might be too hard for you to erase later on. So you gotta find a bit of a balance. Now, when you're placing the markers in, I recommend not putting them too close to the edge of both sides, the left or the right or the top or the bottom, because you'll be using the space around the markers to actually help kind of clone that data and erase the, uh, the tracking points. I'm realizing this might sound a bit confusing without me actually showing to you. So all this, don't worry, will make sense in After Effects when we get to it. And make sure that your subject that is wearing the sunglasses or mask, whatever it may be with tracking markers, that they don't move their head around too much because, I mean, you can still do the effect if they do. And I know it's out of our control sometimes because they may turn their head or, you know, look down or something like that. But as long as they keep most of it, you know, fairly natural, they're looking at camera or they're just making very minimal head turns that are, you know, fairly natural to do, kind of like what I'm doing although it's looking unnatural because I'm deliberately doing it. But just keep in mind that you will have to compensate it later in VFX, which isn't the funnest thing to do. So just make sure they're not like headbanging to their favorite song or something like that. Now, if you need some footage right away so they can try this effect uh, while you watch the tutorial, then you can do so. Uh, we provide the project file and the footage in the description below, so check that out. But what I first recommend is watching the tutorial once. And the reason for that is so you can have some time to bathe in all this new knowledge, let it soak in and understand what you'll need to be doing and then following along with the project file so that you don't really miss anything and you understand all the steps before you try it yourself. So with that said, let's get into After Effects. Once you've launched After Effects, this is the footage that we will be using and comes with a project file. And as you can see, the glasses itself has the tracking markers that you'll need to prepare uh, no matter what it is that you plan to track. We're gonna go ahead and take this footage. We're gonna drop it onto this icon, which will create a new composition just like this. And then the first thing that we wanna do is get some tracking data. So what I like to use is Mocha. So I'm just gonna to go to the effects and presets panel, and then we're gonna look for Mocha, or you can use a free plugin by Video Copilot called uh, Effects Console, which allows me to use a shortcut control spacebar to bring up this little thing where I can just type in the effect that I want, in this case, Mocha, which is really handy. So I recommend checking it out. And then we're gonna hit this big button called Mocha. This little pop-up over here is gonna say that if it's not set to the full resolution, then the track may not be that accurate. So I'm just gonna cancel. We're gonna set the resolution over here, which is half right now, to full, and then we're gonna hit the button and then it won't show that pop-up. So I recommend doing that. We're gonna start at a point that is pretty neutral. So right here, facing pretty much head-on. I'm gonna take this, which is the X Spline Layer Tool, and then we're going to draw the area that has the tracking markers like this. Okay, 
Now, what I recommend is um, if you're using something reflective, such as these glasses over here, then it's better that you do not, uh, I guess, track the areas that have some glare or reflection because if those reflections move then it's going to track that movement as well so that's something to be really careful of uh, no matter what you're applying to track so in this case um i don't see any like real reflections that are going to be a problem any glares or anything like that but if you do see things like that then i would recommend first tracking the glare itself if there's movement and once you've done that make a second layer underneath where you would track uh, what you want to track. So in this case, tracking points. And what that does is it's going to basically omit whatever that you tracked earlier, which would be the glare. Uh, but in this case, we don't have to worry about that. That's just a tip that I want to provide for you if you find yourself in that situation. So once I've drawn this, I'm going to track backwards and then it will follow this movement. It'll pin it quite nicely. So using that small glare as an example, this is so small that it's not going to affect my track, but if this glare that's moving over here, as you can see that white line, if that was a lot bigger, that could be a bit of a problem, especially if it overlaps with your track. So like I said, you would track that first and then track whatever that you actually wanna track, which is these uh, pieces of tape. <laughs> um, we're gonna track forward now and we're gonna see uh, Mocha work its magic, or at least it seems like magic, but it's using a lot of science and coding and honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> but as you can see, it does a fantastic job. And once it is done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control S so that we save this. And then we're gonna close out of Mocha, bringing us back to AE. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create a null object. So we're gonna hit this empty space over here. We're gonna right click it, go to new, and then null object. And we're gonna change this. We're gonna rename it to track. So it's a little bit you know, easier to keep things organized and remember what we're actually doing, especially since there's gonna be quite a few layers. So it's better to rename things while you can and uh, it'll be easier to search back on things. Anyways, this is not a tutorial about being organized, but going back to this footage, we're gonna go to the Mocha and we're gonna apply the data to this tracking layer over here, this null object that we renamed to track. So how we're gonna do that is go to tracking data, go to create track data, and then we're going to uh, make sure that this gear icon is on the layer that we want to apply the tracking data. And in this case, there's only one layer. We've only tracked one thing, but if you track multiple things, uh, then you'll want to rename them so you actually know which one is which. So in this case, we're just gonna hit okay. We're gonna go to export options. We're gonna go to transform. Okay, and then layer export to. We want to export the data to the track layer. So we will click that. And then all you have to do is hit this big button, apply export. And then there you go. All the tracking data will now be applied to this tracking layer here. As you can see, this bunch of squares and stuff. <laughs> Basically, it's uh, keyframed. So if I hit U, it'll bring up all the keyframes. And as you can see, the position, scale, and rotation is now animated and tracked. If you look at this red box over here, it's tracked very nicely to the area that we uh, analyzed in Mocha. So what we're gonna do with this tracking data is we're gonna do two things. One of them is we're going to erase the markers. And then the second thing is pin on our chosen animation. Now let's first erase the tracking points. I know it feels a little painful to add something only to spend time removing it again in VFX, but without it, you can't do the effect in the first place. However, this is a valuable technique to have under your belt if you find yourself in a situation where you need to remove something in VFX. So not just tracking markers, but let's say like a blemish on your actor's face or a smudge on the wall in the background while it's handheld, like it is useful in various situations. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first create a solid, okay? So you can hit the shortcut control Y to bring up a new solid. We're gonna rename this to uh, mat and tracking points like that. Hit okay, and then we have this white solid that fills up the entire frame. So a mat will basically tell what's transparent and what should be solid, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna hide the visibility of this layer, and then we're gonna take the pen tool over here and then we're going to start masking around the points. So starting from here, this will kind of be like my neutral position. And then I'm just going to add a marker here so I know that it is a reference frame. Okay, so if anything goes wrong, I can blame it on the frame. Okay, I can blame it on myself, but I'll know that it'll be starting on this frame. So while highlighting this uh, matte layer, we're going to take the pen tool and we're going to draw around our tracking uh, points. So as I mentioned earlier, the smaller that it is, the easier it will be for you to make adjustments. So in this case, I'm just gonna draw one over here and then we're gonna draw some more, okay? Just all around the points that you want to actually get rid of. So once you've drawn a mask around all your points that you wanna erase, as I mentioned before, you want a decent amount so that you have enough tracking data, but not too much because now you have to, you have to erase it and draw a mask over them. So uh, it can be a time consuming process. So just be aware of that. So what we're gonna do is while we're in the selection tool, which is this cursor over here, we are going to take this pick whip, okay, this parent pick whip, 
and we are going to hold it down and we're going to drag it over to the track layer over here. And what that does is it's going to parent to this track uh, layer. So whatever happens over here, this matte layer will listen. So essentially what that does is it's going to follow the tracking data and be pinned on like so. Pretty crazy, right? Now, there are going to be adjustments that need to be made, for example, because um, when I'm looking down, the angle is going to be kind of like tilted down. So that means that these masks will shift. So you're gonna need to manually do some adjustments. So how I suggest doing that is by hitting M like this. And then we're going to just keyframe all the masks. So we have nine over here. So if you didn't know what was happening, I was just making sure the stopwatch is all highlighted so that I add these keyframes here. And then we're gonna to go to a point around here. And then that's when I start shifting around these masks. And then once you've done that, we're going to play this through and it will automatically animate the frames in between. Now, there could be some corrections that are required, but the more time that you spend on this, the better it'll look. And you do want to spend some time removing these tracking data because it's not exactly a stylistic choice. At least I wouldn't believe so. You have to actually erase them so that they're invisible. So just using this area as an example, this kind of one second, as you can see, it's not bad. So we're going to go forward and then you're going to do the exact same thing. Now I'm going to speed things up so you don't have to watch me actually keyframe things. So once you've made the adjustments to your mask, we're going to turn the layer on, the visibility on at least, so that you can see how well it's being tracked. Pretty good, right? Pretty convincing. But this isn't the effect that we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this bottom layer here. This is our base layer. I'm just going to call it base actually. It's a little bit easier. Okay, and we're gonna hit Control D, and what that does is duplicate the layer. We're gonna call this fill, because that's gonna fill in the areas um, that we are removing the tracking data from. So we're gonna bring this on top of the fill layer. We're gonna actually hide the visibility of it because we don't need to see the white solids. Those white squares can be a little bit annoying after you've looked at them for so long. And we're going to change the track mat from this fill layer here, and we're gonna change it to either alpha mat or luma mat. And what that means is it's going to take either the um, opaque, so non-transparent uh, data from the solid and show, I guess it'll show through. I'm not sure if that's the best way to describe it, but it'll show the areas that had the white solids that we saw earlier. So in this case, nothing looks like it happens because it's basically just one footage slapped on the other. But if I move the position, I'm going to make sure it's highlighted and then I'm going to start shifting it over like this. As you can see, only the areas that we drew a mask around is being revealed underneath. So this is not looking too bad, but right now this is a pretty hard square. So we're gonna actually want to feather the masks that we drew earlier. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to this layer, this matte tracking points. We're gonna hit F to bring up the mask feather. And then we're gonna highlight all the masks. And then we're gonna change to something like, I don't know, five, something that's soft. Okay, so even though it's softer, we are now revealing some of the uh, tracking points underneath and that's because um, our masks may have been a little bit too close to the actual tracking data But don't worry a quick fix instead of manually adjusting each um, Mask and keyframe again. We're gonna actually highlight all of these masks over here and then we're gonna hit this arrow Okay, which will collapse everything we're gonna hit it again So to reveal more parameters in this case what we're gonna touch is the mask Expansion and what that does is it's going to expand according to the value that we give it So in this case, we're just gonna give it something like four four is pretty good, right? Let's take a look So once we play it through We're just gonna play backwards very slowly so you can see what's happening and essentially what it's doing is it's borrowing the data or whatever's happening uh, next to it, because remember we shifted this layer over to the right. So basically whatever that was on the right, it's now covering the tracking points, which is pretty dope, right? Now it starts revealing a little bit over here and those kind of things we can manually fix by keyframing the position. So we're gonna hit P while highlighting this fill layer. We hit P over here because this is, this is not bad. We're going to go backwards. This is actually okay. It's not bad as well. Um, I'm gonna maybe shift it over just a little bit. And if there are a little bit of imperfections like this, you can always feather a little more. You can expand it a little more. You make adjustments that way. And just keep in mind, there's also gonna be an animation that's slapped on top as well. So it's gonna be too busy for people to really notice and make it look kind of weird. And plus these sunglasses are pretty dark, so it's not gonna be in anyone's attention. So you don't have to be super clean with it, but you know, if you're a bit of a perfectionist like me, then sometimes you can't help it. So we're going to make adjustments like this. So I start seeing a bit of that skin tone here, but it's not too big of a deal. And then if I play it through, it's not looking too bad. 
We don't see all that green tape that we saw earlier. And like I said, you can make adjustments by softening the feather. And in this case, if you don't like this black dot over here, um, depending on the transparency of your sunglasses, like right now you can kind of see a bit of my eyes and you see a bit of my nose and that black square is, you know, could be a little bit annoying. So what you can do is just, you know, duplicate this if you find yourself in this situation and you can delete all the other masks except for this middle one, which I believe is oh, mask number one over here. So we can delete that and then we can shift the position of this one. I'm just going to delete all the keyframes as well. And then we can specifically just work with this one and then see what gives us the best results. So I can, you know, feather this a little more. I can also expand it a little more. Okay, now I start seeing a little bit of the other points, so I gotta be careful of that. So that's something to be careful of. But now, for example, like this, it's a little bit less prominent because now it's softened, so the edges aren't as apparent, and then you would just reposition it like you would earlier. Okay, so after some further refinements, this is what I have. And as you can see, the tracking dots are erased. They are gone. It's like they were never even there. Now, before we get to the fun part of slapping in our animation, you want to first determine what is your animation or graphic going to look like and how is it going to look like on the glasses or the mask or the helmet of your choice. So in this case, if there are areas that are going to be out of bounds, in this case, it's going to be, you know, if the animation leaks out of the glasses, then it won't look like it's actually, you know, projected on the glasses. But let's say that your whole mask or your helmet is this big and your animation is like just over here, then it's not gonna protrude or uh, go out of bounds from the actual object that you want the LED effect to happen. So in this case, I'm going to mask around the glasses because I think my graphic is going to leak out a little bit. So we're gonna do the exact same thing as taught earlier to create a mat. We're going to hit the shortcut control Y to create a new solid. We're gonna call it matte glasses like this. We're gonna hide the visibility, go to the pen tool, and then we're gonna start drawing the area that we don't want the animation to leak out. So in this case, the sunglasses like this. And as I mentioned before, the more time that you spend on it, the better the results. In this case, I'm gonna speed up the process so you don't have to suffer watching me painfully and terribly masking this. Okay, so this is the results after masking it and animating it so that it matches the movement of glasses. And something really important that I forgot to mention actually is before you start masking it manually, I recommend you first parenting it over to the track. So it does a lot of the bulk work of the movement and then you can make some further adjustments from there. But if I hit M to show you the mask path, as you can see, I keyframed the adjustments that were required because when I'm moving my head around, then the shape of the mask is going to shift. But if I turn on the visibility, it's just gonna be a white solid over the glasses like this. And just like what we did before, we're going to use this uh, area to show where the animation will stay within that white solid. Now we finally reached the fun part where we can slap in our animation. In this case, I'm gonna use something from my digital product called Enter the Future. It's a motion graphic asset pack that I handcrafted and includes a variety of assets you can use for your music videos, commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. So if you need transitions or borders or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, I recommend checking it out. In this case, I've only imported the stuff that I used, which are only these. I'm gonna use something from my folder, from the emblem folder over here, this category, and we're gonna just put the I one, which is the one that I used for the demonstration. So like this. Now, actually, I'm not gonna put it in the comp. I'm going to pre-comp this over here by dragging it into this icon, like what I did earlier. I'm just gonna move that to tutorial folder for organization's sake. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control K, and that's gonna bring up the composition setting right over here. And we're gonna actually change the height and width to something that was similar to the dimension of the sunglasses. So it doesn't need to be accurate. I can just do a rough guess. So in this case, I think it was kind of like this. Okay, maybe a little more narrow. So maybe 450, like this. Okay, this looks about right. Uh, I know it's a little bit wider than the actual sunglasses if I compare it, but a little more space is a little bit better. So I'm gonna hit S to bring up the scale. I'm just gonna scale it down kind of like this, very rough. Actually, it will scale down even a little more to give us a little more wiggle room. Let's do 55. Okay, so once we reach here, we're gonna go back to our LED glasses footage over here. And then starting from here, I'm going to go to that emblem eye over here. And then we're gonna slap it in like this. And then now we're going to parent it over to that track layer, just like that. And if I play it through, as you can see, it is tracked onto the glasses. Now I'm gonna make some further adjustments here by hitting S to rescale it, reposition it a little bit. 
and just play around with the settings until it looks kind of right. I'm gonna hit R to bring up the rotation and then just rotate it a little bit because I think my glasses are a little bit rotated because I tilted my head. And then we're just gonna center it kind of with the nose like this. Okay, kind of like that is okay. And then we're going to just play it through, see how that looks. And this is not too bad, but it still looks slapped on. There are going to be a couple details that we'll need to do to make it look like it's actually part of the glasses and look like it could be an actual LED display. So remember that mat that we created for the glasses? We're going to use that now so that this animation doesn't leak over. As you can see, some of the circuit uh, kind of detail is starting to come out of glasses and we don't want that so we're going to drag this underneath the mat and then just like before when we are using mats we're going to change the track mat to either alpha mat or luma mat so uh, as a bit of a refresher, Alpha Matte uses the areas that are not transparent to show what it should actually show. And Luma Matte will show the lighter parts, which in this case is white. So either of those options would work. In this case, let's change it up and use Luma Matte. As you can see, it'll still work and it will not leak through the glasses. And if I need to make adjustments like hitting S to bring up the scale like that, or I need to reposition it or something like that, it's not going to leave the glasses feels like kindergarten where you don't color out of the lines. Okay, so now we're gonna make some adjustments to actually make it look like it's potentially a uh, LED display. So we're gonna go back to the pre-comp with the animation. And I'm gonna show you two options to make it look like it could be an LED display that is physically built in with the glasses. So the first one that I wanna show you, I learned from my friend Nick Koo, who was actually also an instructor on this Josh Olufemi channel. So make sure to check out his tutorials after this one. And I'm gonna actually create a new solid by hitting control Y like this. I'm gonna call it CC ball. And then we're gonna apply the CC ball action effect like this. And then we're gonna change the grid space to something a little bit smaller, maybe 0.5. And then the ball size, we're gonna bring it down a little bit, kind of like this, okay. Till it looks like it's kind of like pixel dots. And then we're going to change the track mat over here of this animation to Luma mat. And then as you can see, it looks like pixel dots. And then if I go back to this footage, boom, it looks like it's these LED dots that are built into the sunglasses, which is pretty dope. So that's option number one, I'm gonna delete this. Option number two is to simply create a new adjustment layer like this, we're gonna call it blinds, okay? And we don't need this track mat to be luma mat anymore. I'm just gonna change it to nothing. And we're going to apply an effect called Venetian blinds like this. And then we're gonna change the angle to 90 degrees. And basically what that does is it's gonna make it look like it's blinds as I change the transition completion data like this. And then the width I can adjust so that it looks like this. So it looks kind of like scan lines. So if I go back to this composition, as you can see, it also looks like it could be a physical LED screen built there. And then you can always make adjustments so that it can look realistic to you like this, this looks pretty legit. And it really depends on what kind of flavor you wanna to give to it. So those are two ideas for you to try out. And the last little detail that I like to slap on to everything, if you're familiar with my work, is I like making things glow. I'm like a moth, I just like glowy things, I don't know why. But I'm gonna apply something called Deep Glow, Ooh, if I can spell it. And unfortunately, this is a paid plugin. However, it gives very accurate and beautiful uh, light fall off when it adds this glow onto it. And we're going to change the mode to screen like this. And then we're gonna adjust it so it's not super bright, kind of like that. And then if I play it through, looks pretty dope. And I know what you're thinking, Herman. Do I really need to pay for this plugin to make this look cool? And the answer is, well, no. This is just a little more efficient, but if I delete this glow, you can actually use the built-in glow in After Effects. So if I search up glow, this is the normal one that comes with After Effects. And then we're gonna change the parameters so that the radius is a little bit wider like this. And then we're gonna adjust the brightness. And then we're gonna hit Control D so we make a duplicate of that glow. And then now we're gonna just kind of fake the inverse square law where we bring up the radius and then bring down the exposure kind of like this then we play with the intensity and if we play this back it has a nice soft glow and then you can always duplicate it again where you can adjust the radius and then let's play with that and then you can just keep messing around with the parameters until you get a nice soft even glow kind of like this and then i'm just going to adjust the opacity of this led so it doesn't look like it's too bright kind of like this, and then I play it through. 
As you can see, you are essentially done. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you're worried that this animation looks a little bit too flat, especially if you are moving your head around like this, now it's not along the curves of the sunglasses, which is kind of nice because now we don't have to worry about compensating for that distortion, but to quickly share a technique on how you can compensate for it. So let's say like this eye is like over here. It doesn't make sense that it's so flat, right? It should be curving along with the sunglasses. So what you can do is lock this window over here and then you're gonna go to your pre-comp with the animation. So you can see both windows like this. And then you're going to scrub through and then starting from this neutral one, what you can do is create a new adjustment layer like this. I'm just gonna quickly run over it, rename it to distortion like this. And then the effect I like to use is Bezier warp like this. And then right now, uh, this is looking okay, but let's say we wanted to curve a little bit. You can start using these points to bring it down a little bit like this, and then bring this down a little bit. It then has a very slight curve. And you may not be able to notice this just yet, but when you keyframe all this by hitting the stopwatch over here and then hitting U to bring up all the keyframes, you can kind of go down over here and then start bending it down a little more. And this will kind of warp it. Now, of course, you will need to keyframe the position as well, because when you do that, it's kind of bending the whole image down. But let's say that starting from here, it starts curving a little more on this side. So actually, let's turn, let's move this over to the side over here. So this is looking a little flat, right? So what we can do is take that distortion, we're gonna highlight the effect, and then you can just kind of pull it like this. So as you can see, it starts to bend a little more, which makes a little more sense. And even if I move this looping animation like this, it'll keep the distortion because I'm distorting the entire dimension of the composition. Now this is just me roughly eyeballing the effect so that it would compensate for it. Get it? Eyeball? because we're using an eye for this animation for my motion graphic asset pack. Yeah, my girlfriend didn't like that joke either. But uh, as I was saying, if you want a more accurate result, then you can always use a grid as reference. So instead of using this eye over here, we can create a new solid by hitting Control Y, call it grid, and then apply the grid effect like this. And then using these lines, you can put this underneath the distortion, and then you can start distorting it and using the lines as a reference. So for example, I would want to make sure that, you know, this top line is along the edge of the sunglasses. So in this case, I would just make sure that I am moving the points so that it is aligned kind of like this. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I just wanna roughly show you the technique so that you can do it yourself. But this is essentially how you would do it. You basically move the points so that the lines would match the sunglasses and also the amount of squares match the amount uh, so it's consistent the entire way through. So once you've finished with the grids, you can hide that and then turn your animation back on and then it'll be much more accurate. By this point, you are completely done. That is how you do the effect. Once you add some additional motion graphics to make it look more cyberpunky and futuristic, in this case, more motion graphics from my pack, this is what it ends up looking like. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and that it was clear enough to give you the confidence to try this out yourself because there's just so many things that you can do with it and the results are just really satisfying. Now I'm personally into the cyberpunk genre and the futuristic aesthetics, so I know that I'm gonna keep using this effect in the future. And if you're like me and you like creating things with a futuristic look, then check out the pack that I mentioned earlier. I designed it to be a toolbox of assets that you can just keep going back to and applying to whatever project that you wish. And because of both the amazing Will and Josh, we provide you an unlimited license so that you can do so and keep using it as many times as you want. There's no limitation. It comes with 4K pre-rendered assets so you can simply drag and drop them into your favorite editing software. And it also comes with a customizable After Effects file and Mogret file for those of you who are Premiere Pro users like myself. Now make sure you stay tuned to the Olufemi channel so you don't miss the next tutorial from both Josh and myself. And if you want to see what I'm up to, then check out my Instagram page. The handle is at coffee liquor. So guys, until the next tutorial, let's bring it back over to Josh. Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible tutorial. Please make sure to like this video and to share this video with whoever you think may want to see it and subscribe to the channel as well. Please make sure to remember to check out Herman's incredible ETF pack. That's what we call it. Enter the future. Um, I've been using it a lot and it's been freaking amazing. So guys, thank you again for watching the video and remember to keep it chill.